Okay, welcome everybody. Coffee and art in the morning, Monday morning. I love me some Mondays. I love me some Mondays. Let's make sure we're focused there. You're weird. And I like you. <laughs> Thanks everybody for being here today. We're going to color in this double page spread. And I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, but it's by Clara Markova. Um, a Czech from Czech, Czech Republic. Um, did this book and I have done a flip through it so I'm not going to flip through it today but we are going to color this double page spread which does include in the back little doors that you cut out these two doors go on this page and then this door goes on the uh, locket the uh, necklace locket page but we're going to do these two on here today so I am kind of zoomed in, so I'll just have to kind of keep doing this as we go around. Uh, if you're watching this show on YouTube, a recording, if you're watching a recording on YouTube, thanks for watching the recording. This is a live show on Ustream. I like to say that every now and then because sometimes I get people, new people, I, I know it's new people, that haven't watched the show and they'll, and they'll comment on older videos and say, you're so chatty and you're, you talk so much and you didn't start coloring until 15 minutes in. Things like that. Well, it's a live show, and I'm talking to a room full of chatty people. So, yeah, and that's adorable. Adorable. Good one, Vicky. And so, yeah, so it does get chatty. And sometimes we go on rabbit trails. We drag things out. We're here for three hours, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes we space it out into a couple segments. So just saying, if you're watching this <laughs> recording, I am talking to people. Oh, and speaking of talking to people, someone on YouTube asked me um, the list of my drawers, my collage drawers, you know, in my tower oh, of collage, the, the colorful drawers. Uh, asked me what the 10 drawers were again and so I typed them out for the person that asked me but I thought I'd go ahead and reread them because when we do collage people always ask me what's what kind of uh, categories I have now that's whether you um, yeah I can blame you guys for the chattiness okay thanks book nester <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm going to read out the different categories I have so when we do collage it doesn't have to be in drawers you can put them in file folders you know we've done the file folder uh, project a few years ago and um, I don't think there's a video on that I think I've shown it but there's not a video on that it was before I uploaded to YouTube all right, so let me read the 10 categories uh, that I divide my collage up into, my collage elements, I should say, for working in collage. Now, this does not include magazines or calendars or old books or anything like that. This is just when I have, you know, some loose collage fodder. This is the, these are the categories that I put them in. Number one, watches and mechanicals. Two, flowers, trees, and food. Three, architecture. Four, birds and bugs. Five, animals. Six, maps and scenery. And that includes like landscape bits, mountains, anything like that. Seven is people and faces. Eight, colors and patterns. Nine, books and music. And 10 are odds and ends, anything that just doesn't really fit a category. So those are the 10 categories that I uh, sort and file my collage fodder in. What am I going to use? <laughs> what am I going to use for this book? Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do, um, well, I can't say I'm going to just stick with it, but here's what I, my plan is. I'm going to do watercolor washes with a, probably a combination of my old watercolors here. And the real brush markers, the watercolor brush markers, and my, where's Eileen? Eileen not here? <laughs> oh, oh, uh oh, Eileen's here. And some ink tents. <laughs> Sorry, Eileen. And then if I don't find the color, something I want, I'll probably, you know, throw in some neo colors. But that's just for the base. After I do that, then I'll probably go right on, on over to just ink tints and Prismacolor. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Eileen. <laughs> Eileen. Eileen's the one that gifted me these uh, Kuratakis, and she doesn't like it when I mix them with ink tents. 
<laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so that's probably what we'll we'll use um, a little bit of anything. And you know, again, if I just want to mix me up some watercolor, and then I also use um, a porcelain tray. You can use there's you know, and when you buy um, sets of of like neo colors or pencils a lot of times they come in the tins and the tins have white tray tops so you don't have to buy although i think this was at blick it was like three bucks um for a porcelain tray and this is good for if you want to use your water brush which let me find my water brush here where's my water brush there it is <clears throat> and you don't want a full strength marker or, or a brush pen a full strength then you can just kind of put it down on your uh, tray and then pick up what you want and and this all can be reconstituted any of this can be re-wet and reused and then uh, and I just use my water brush this is just a Pentel water brush so it's going to clean it off here and then when you get this gets too much as long as this is all water medium this can be neo colors you can scratch off some neo colors let me grab that <clears throat> you can scratch off your neo colors like this and then pick that up okay and again it'll stay it can you can re-wet it in here or you can take your neo color and and i say neo color i mean neo color two Hi, Linda McLinda. <laughs> and um, you can just pull it off the tip. The same thing, you can do that with your ink tints. So anything <clears throat> like that, you can just pull it off with the water brush. Or you can, you know, scrape it down on your tray. Either and or, you can do. And I just use a Kleenex to clean off. I found that a Kleenex works the best to clean off my water brush, which I probably need some water in there shortly. So I'm going to keep that right up here so if i need to reach up let me put my other thing behind it so it kind of props it up for me without it rattling that may not work because i got to move this around so if you all have any questions put them in caps because uh, then i'll know you're talking to me and not just amongst yourself your poor neo colors are sitting in a drawer because you're afraid to use them Make Julie. Make Julie. You're the boss of your neo colors. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't be afraid to use your supplies. I think I think Paula tweeted over the weekend that her silver silver and I've not had any problems with any of my neo colors, but she said her silver dried up. Her silver neo color. So it's probably something to do with the metal. We'll have to ask Claire. Because <laughs> when there's metal in a crayon, Claire. Claire's taking metallur uh, uh, blacksmithing and metallurgy. Yeah. <laughs> in college in UK. So. Okay. So, hi Tiger Witch. Kimberly. And who else am I missing? Anybody else that's coming? AZ, Stargazer. If I miss saying hi to anybody, I'll try to catch saying hi to you. I, say, I tried to say hi before I hit record. Because otherwise, then the recording has to listen to, you know, <laughs> me rattling off everybody's name. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so get those out. Get those out. So, um, yeah. So, this is the page. Now, before we do this, though, because I'm going to color, when I color the uh, little bird houses, I'm going to want to match the doors. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. Get my little bee scissors out here. And I'm going to just cut out these two. That way, I don't lose the other one here by, you know, having it loose in the book and then having it fall out or something so I'll just cut these out okay we'll go back to our page and I do have black cardstock behind the pages here just so that you know to protect the page behind it and if I go if I paint off the edge not to have the book get all painty so and it's always a good idea to put some cardstock behind your page even though this is one-sided they're one-sided pages but every page has this little um, little doodle on the back of every page with some lines like you could write 
whatever you want on there but you don't have to worry about it going through because all the pages are one-sided in that way okay so yeah so i'm going to cut these two little doors out let's put this back in there i'm not using that color but we're going to use all kinds of water mediums and then we're going to um shade with prismacolor and um ink tints so that's what we're going to shade with today all right so i'm going to cut the little doors out and then we're going to there's little dotted lines on both of them where you put a little cut and then the little tabs go in there so you can op actually open the door so y'all have any questions otherwise you know we're just going to color and have fun they have finally ground mica in the metallics one it shouldn't have dried up hmm well, maybe paula just got a bad one i don't know <laughs> mine haven't dried up but you know it's it's kind of true of any supply you have you don't want to let it sit around for years you know you let it sit around and things you know can dry up paints and things now watercolors you know like in a tray they won't dry up because you can reconstitute them but yeah don't sit on your supplies what good is that going to do like are you saving it for when you're like 90 years old <laughs> oh i'll use it when i'm old <laughs> i don't know all righty so i'm just kind of jiggling it because it's kind of jagged on the end there so i'm cutting it you know like it is jagged all right I think I need to cut out these little this little windows too, right? So you can look in, but I'm probably going to need to get an X-Acto knife for that. I could cut through right along the line because when you well no I can't because I'm not gluing this flat down. I'll say when you glue it flat down, it doesn't matter if you cut through something because it's going to be glued down. But this isn't going to be glued down. So we're just going to get our little doors ready so we can do those at the same time as we do the birdhouses. She got neo color too. Oh, you think maybe that it was her her neo color one that dried up? Maybe. Maybe it was a neo color one that dried up. We'll have to ask her to check on that, Miss Paula. Tails help you loosen up. Oh, oh, good. Um, well, I think it's Jake Parker that says something to, and I tell my grandson this too. Perfection is the enemy of done, and it's been said a few different ways, but um, that's what I, and I tell my grandson that because he's like that. He wants it to be perfect, and then he doesn't turn something in, and instead of getting an A for a great art project, he gets a zero, and his teacher goes, uh, 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 um, let's turn that project in, shall we, Cameron? <laughs> uh, oh, does, hey, hey, Jean, um, does Laura not fussy cut? I, I must have missed her, um, talking about her fussy cutting. Because I didn't see that. Oh, so yeah. So if you uh, if you're a perfectionist, you don't get anything done. <laughs> I tell I tell him this is just what I tell him. I said, Cam, it's better to get a B on a not per and, and this is and I'm also talking to a student that has other classes, right? You know, he's got you know it's not like arts is only thing that he has to has homework and things on. So in that case, I tell them, you don't have time. You don't have time to spend six weeks on one sketch in your sketchbook. There's not enough. You can't do that. It's best to get a B and get it done than get an F on a perfect page that now it's too late to get a grade on, you know? Um, hey, Anonymous. No, it was a two, and yes, it cracked and hasn't dried, and I'm not the only one that's happened to. Does that are you Paula in the anonymous category, <laughs> or is that uh, is that you, uh, uh, Lady Jan? Sometimes anonymous is Lady Jan. So, yeah. <clears throat> hey, Cass, Kathy. No, she had. Oh, 
Oh, oh, okay. See, I missed that. <laughs> she didn't do well at, at fussy cutting. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I need to get a, let me get a, a cutter. Well, no, you know what? I probably won't need to cut it yet because if I cut it now, any water could just leak through and I don't want that. But this is going to have a cut and then the little door here will go like, you know, in the little cut there. So this is going to go like this and that'll open up like that. That's that one. And then this one is going to go on here. And this one will open up here. Aren't they cute? What a cute thing. <laughs> oh, okay, Jean. Your granddaughter does the same thing as Cam Whippy. I know. Tell her. Perfection's the enemy of done. <laughs> All right, so I just got to remember to color these, although if they're wood, and this is, well, this is wood here. This one is um, some kind, it looks like a gourd, like a pumpkin gourd, and so that's how we'll color it. The, this one we're going to color orange. I'm not sure, and you can make it up. You know, you color whatever you color you want. So, but this one I think I want to color oranges and yellows, and then this one, a, a purple would be good. A purple would be a nice uh, contrast to the orange. Like we could color it like weathered wood. And of course we have the tree. So I need to pick out some colors. And uh, I'm not sure on the background. Uh, sometimes you all know I like to paint my backgrounds. But I'm not sure I want to paint the backgrounds in this because it's so light and bright. And, and I, I just picture all this happening really in a bright day with no dark... Uh, sun, I mean, no dark uh, sky. So, yeah. So maybe we'll just do... I'm not sure. Not sure what color we'll do the background yet. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Let's just put this right here. And then there's a key here with some jewels. <clears throat> All kinds of little mushrooms here. And, yeah. So I think I'm going to start on this one. So I'm going to just kind of stay right here. Hopefully we're going to be focused in and all um while we get some washes down all right so let me test out my bright orange um i might do a kind of a bright this just just it just reminds me the whole book reminds me like of a children's book fairy tales and everything so i'm going to just have my tray is going to be right here and i'm just going to kind of test my colors here because, you know, it is sometimes hard to tell exactly what color you're using. I also, I think I want to wet because I really want my sienna. Hmm. Hmm. Although, okay, so I'm just going to wet my colors here and let this kind of sit. Um, I do have the, what's called brown in the Zig Kurataki. It's very sienna-like. So, let's see. Because we used that yesterday morning. So, I'm kind of liking that maybe for the trees. Can we do a pop-up book next? I'm not sure what you mean, make one? No, I won't be making a pop-up book. Um, who did a flip book just recently? I saw it. Um, who, who tweeted out a pop-up book? I can't remember right now. Somebody posted one. You like my messy palette? Yeah, this is old. This is quite old. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Jean would be the one to make. Jean makes her and and um, she and uh, Jen Oz, they literally could build the world with cardboard and paper. I'm just saying, chipboard and paper. Okay, so um, let's see. This yellow might be a little too bright. I might just go with. Let me test out here on my palette here. <clears throat> Yeah, that's better. All right, so let me kind of water that down. It's kind of more of a pumpkin color. And all it is is like some of this orange in my palette. But, you know, you can use, use if you want it real bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the wash, um, you know, the, the uh, initial wash over the whole thing. And I'm going to even go over those little dots, the little, uh, the little pumpkin warts. <laughs> I'm going to go over the pumpkin warts because I'll do those, um, I'm going to do those darker. 
So see how I'm not doing it um, like solid. Do you know what I mean? It, I'm making it look like watercolory like. So if you do this kind of technique, whether it's with acrylic paint, watercolor, whatever you use as a background color, you can get pages done faster. Not that you have to rush or anything, but you will get pages done faster if you start with a wash. And I know I say this every time you want, before you start layering up, um, layers of watercolor and start shading and all, you want to let that dry. Because if you don't let it dry, it's going to soak through your pages. It's the water that goes through. Hey, Poppy. Yes, we did have storms, but it wasn't right, right next to us. There's storms in Georgia, Florida, uh, Mississippi, all south, but it didn't come near us. I mean, we had bad thunderstorms, but it wasn't like, you know, right here. Okay, so now I want to do the little down here. This is part of the little, it's like a little birdhouse made out of a gourd or a squash. Like that. So, yeah. Um, now, I'm going to want to do this a wood color. So, I think I'll do it the same color as like I'm going to do the stem. I think I'll do it like a greeny, like an olive with maybe, here's some leftover olive right here. I need more water in there. Squirt some water on there. Here's some olive. But I don't want to put it direct there. I want to test it over here because I don't want it real heavy. I want it layered. Do you like the zigs or mermaid markers? Somebody else asked me that. If I like the zigs or the mermaid markers, uh, I'm going to go ahead, guys, and just keep working on. This is the, like, I'm going to do like an olive color stem and an olive color wood door. So I'll talk while I'm doing this. Um, the zig are pure watercolor. I'm not sure if... Um, the mermaid markers somebody asked me about the jane davenport mermaid markers if they're you know exactly what they're made out of if it's just watercolor inks or whatever but there's a couple differences one jane's markers which are very concentrated and very vibrant colors there's 12 of them i've, I've done a swatch they're very colorful bright concentrated water brush markers but there's only 12 colors okay and the brush, I think she made it on purpose. I've not researched it. But I think she made the her brushes. Let me grab one here to show you. She made the... <clears throat> the brush tips are quite long and kind of floppy. So that you can do like, you know, she does big faces and does like washes of color and things like that on the... Um, Oh, wow, Kimberly. Kimberly says she has over 500 dr dried gourds that were left at her house. Hey, you had so much rain. And so um, they're very floppy, and so you can get a large swath of color with this, and then you can, you know, move it with water. But I, here's the thing that, uh-oh, I just got it on my, I don't care if it gets on my table, but I don't want to run my hand through it. Look at the difference in the brushes, the brush tips. Can you see that? Look how long those brush that brush tip is. Can you see it? And look how short and concentrated the zig brushes are. This, you can get much more detail. And they have, I think there's up to 60 colors. I have 36 colors, but I think you can get up to 60 colors in this. Not saying that you can't make some colors with these, but you're going to be hard-pressed to make 60 colors unless you really, really work at it, right? Um, so if you're going to do a lot of watercoloring with, and you want a lot of subtle colors, then, you know, these are the way to go, especially with the tip. If you're going to do large, bright, colorful swatches of concentrated vibrant color than the 12 colors that Jane has you know it's a good I like them both but they're just for different things yes there's a big difference in the tip size 
Okay, so yeah, is that the that's the wrong? I got all these little marker, I got all the little caps are all different, but I like them and we will be using them. We'll be using them, but there's twelve colors. Okay, now I gotta find me. Um, I touched the tips. Hang on, guys. Let me get a baby wipe. clean off some of it so yeah I'm not sure what um, a TNT what what's her her brushes are made out of I mean made up of these are watercolor in a brush they're not like the kids markers you know I love me the kids Crayola super tips that are water soluble but they're not going to blend and and act like watercolor this is true watercolor in a brush the Zig Kuretake Clean color, real brush marker. <laughs> okay, so what was I? All right, let me put the cap back on. All right, so that stem there, and um, I think I'm going to do the wood floor inside the house. That same green because that'll tie it together when the door opens. And also, I thought about. Let me finish this. I can zoom in if you guys want because we're I'm kind of I'm trying to show you the whole big picture but I'm also doing detail so it's kind of hard it's kind of tricky to you know be focused on both close up and far away you're welcome um, the other thing I want to do on here is I want to do the back so that when it opens up you know when it, well, when it opens up when it opens up it's just not a white page there so I think I'm going to go ahead and with that green, I'm just going to go ahead and do a back, let's set it down here. Let's just do a wash of green on the back. And I might put some little wood grain in it or something. Just so it's not a white, flat, white something on the back. I should be going all in one direction and I'm oversaturating it so I gotta be careful. So I'm gonna set that aside and let it dry. <clears throat> Our little door and I don't want to lose this little door for the other side. All right. You can see fine? Okay. All right. So let's see what else we can tackle here. Um, I'm going to try to get the main, you know, the big bulk areas first. You know what I mean? The big, some, the big areas. I'm not sure what color I want to do that. I, I still want to kind of keep it, I think, in the orange family. Because when I do the background leaves, those are going to be green. So I kind of want this to be, you know, in the orange family. So I might go ahead and do that with the Kuretake. Um, this is just called orange. <clears throat> so it'll be kind of brighter maybe let's see let me do a little test let's do a little test yeah I'm liking that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put some on here and then water it out because I want this to look really squashy pumpkin-y and I can get that real dark right along the edge but it's just really easier for me just to scribble some off in the tray and pick it up from there because I can control how much I put down much easier than just going direct to uh, the paper with the marker I can you know get exactly how much I want just picking it up off the tray so if y'all have any questions just ask or if you're coloring something along with thanks for being here Hope everybody had a good weekend, safe weekend. All right, so see, I'm going to want to darken that up right along the edge some more, but I got to let it dry. So I'll, I need to hit it with the heat gun or um, just, you, you can just let it dry. But, you know, we're trying, we try to move along. So we, there's a little turned up leaf right there. And these little leaves over here so I'm just kind of putting a wash on them then we'll go back and shade and you can shade with more watercolor or you know I also want to get out some pencils too I 
All right, so there's the first initial wash, and it's it's kind of a yellow ochre color here, and then a brighter orange here. Now I want these leaves here on the bottom to be the same orange. So I'm just going to do a wash right over the whole thing, and then you can go in there and detail it out. And I don't have this planned out. I'm just kind of looking at it, seeing what I like or what feels like what I want to do. You're coloring the betta fish. <laughs> Are you coloring my betta fish, Aussie? <laughs> okay, so let's see. And I think this little stem here needs to be the yellow ochre, too. It's part of it. There's some little jewel things in there. I think I'll just color that whole thing there and then shade it. It's hard for me not to want to zoom in, but I'm getting ready to move over to the other side. So, um, uh, you know, it's probably best if I don't zoom in, zoom in yet till I start doing more shading, right? All right, so there's kind of that main thing, the main pumpkin thing, squash. No shading yet. Oh, you are doing my fish. Muse says, end up spending Saturday sorting out her friend's knitting. She seems to think there, there's a muse that, there's a muse there. Oh, brother. Muse said, where there's a muse, there's a way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Girls. Okay, so I, I want this kind of like an aubergine, aubergine you know, like a, a purpley. And I think, let's see if this is the color. This may be, no, that's black. I know it's right somewhere right next to it. I want kind of a purpley. Um, purple kind of nope that's I think that's um, that's dark gray I want a purpley color like um, <clears throat> kind of a gray purple let's see what's this one I can't remember what I used last week it wasn't deep blue yeah you know, deep blue is a little too blue I needed a little bit more purple I could mix my own but let's just wait and see Let's see how the uh, light violet is. Now, that's too light. Okay, so this is where I kind of, this might be where I go into my ink tints. Oops, sorry, there's a shadow for my tray. Do, how do we, um, uh, TNT, if you will hashtag me, uh, hashtag um, color my beta. I think I put that on the beta fish underneath, hashtag color my beta, and tell me where you posted it. Then whether it's Twitter, Instagram, wherever, then I'll and I'll show it off too. I'll show off the one from um, that Nathaniel did. I showed it. Was it yesterday or was it Friday? I can't remember when I showed. I think it was yesterday. Anyway, uh, Nathaniel did colored one. Let me see if I can just bring this up on Instagram real quick, and I'll show you the one that he did. Nat man, Nat. Nathaniel, he's called Natman, 1963. Here's the one he did on, and he posted on Instagram. So yeah, and awesome. Look at the highlight on it and all. So yeah. All right. So let's see. Let's go back to some looking at ink tints and kind of a aubergine color. Now, the, one of the things about ink tints, the color is not exact here, and you can't see the color here. So you'll have to have like a scratch sheet and test it out, unless you have it swatched. That's pretty good. It's a little purpler than blue, though. I want it kind of almost, let me test this one. Um, I, have, I have them swatched out, but I have to dig that out. Oh, here we go. This might be dusky purple. That's a little better. Yeah, I'm going to go with dusky purple in the ink tints. So, again, you don't have to use these exact colors. I'm just showing you, you know, you can use something similar. There, yeah, there you go, Julie. <laughs> Mick Julie goes, Dee Dee used dusky purple with a touch of violet. Yeah, yeah, this is dusky. Oh, I'm just going to put the initial wash on for now. And I want the, um, yeah, I think I'll go ahead and just put a little bit, you know, I'm just going to kind of, do a nice light coat because this is very concentrated too once you wet it you'll see so i think i'll do the wood the dusky purple and then the 
accenting parts the um, regular purple or violet rather that we just had out. Now that's thistle. Let's see. Let me see what color thistle is. Thistle's too red. Okay. Let's see. It's dark purple, but that. Oh, I like that dark purple. <gasps> you know what? I think now that might be too. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with dark purple on the wood, and I'll go with dusky purple for the like the shingles. So I'm going to go back over this. <laughs> I'm going to go back over where I've already put. And so we're going to do dark purple, like under the shingles and on the wood. And I'm not pushing down hard. You'll see when I touch this with water, it's going to like, wow, right? It's going to really be concentrated. So you don't need to put a whole, just a, let me put this one down because I'll scratch over on that. So I'll use these two colors. And also, if you're going to not do a full page at one time, it's probably best to write down the colors you're using. Um, because, trust me, when you do a whole bunch of color books, you'll forget, what did I use there? I do it all the time. I just, you know, Eileen, close your eyes. Yeah, I'm using some ink tins. All right, so this I'm going to use for the darkest wood. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do on the floor on the inside here, that dark wood here. It's a little step stool there. Go around that. Oh, it's a little rug. It's a little rug. Okay. And then this door I'm going to do in the dark as well. Let me it's not color I'll have to do it this way. So I'm just going to put a you'll see when I hit this with the water Try not to leave, when you use ink tints, try not to like make pencil too many pencil lines like that because those are hard to like get rid of completely. See, look how much I'm putting. You can still see those pencil lines. So it's best if you just kind of go soft and don't leave pencil lines because when you add the water, it'll bleed out. Okay, so here we go. Let's do the door first. Oh, and I want to do the back side of the door too. Which one was it now here? Yeah. So I want to do, that's hard to see, white paper. So I don't really want to leave, um, well, I don't mind doing some lines this way because I want to make it look like wood eventually. So on the back side here. Swatched all yours onto address labels and wrap this. <gasps> That's a good idea. As long as you don't get where, well, and who, which one of us are really probably going to work our pencil down to the nub in ink tints. But, um, yeah, that's a good idea. So, uh, Jody says she swatched all of hers onto address labels and then wrapped the swatches on the end next to the pencil colors. She says the best thing she ever did. That is a good idea. And you do have about this much space right there where there's no writing or anything. You're not covering up the name or the number if you put swatch right there. Uh, we might have to do this. Should we just stop and do, label all our pencils now? <laughs> I'm going to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I have some labels downstairs next to the printer. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of do that because I'm going to leave, I want it to look like kind of like wood. So let's go and do the front first. <laughs> That's a good idea. Let me make a note to do it, though, because uh, if I don't do it, like, right this minute, I'm going to... So, um, yeah, use labels to swatch and wrap on ink tints. Because, you know, like my Prismacolors, it's easy to see the color. The whole pencil's that color, you know. These are a little tricky because, you look, they look exactly the same. You can't tell what color it is. And this is just not accurate, you know. I mean, it's close, but it's just not exact. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and, now watch. Watch, wait for it. <laughs> watch how it's almost like I could almost have had too mm -hmm. much just by coloring it one coat. See how vibrant it pops out? Now, 
Now, ink tints are ink, okay? When ink tints is watered down like this and completely dissolved and dry, it will not reconstitute. Well, if it does, it's not going to be much. It'll be, just be the places that didn't get dissolved. So ink tints are more on the permanent side once it is completely dissolved and dry. Okay. Now when we're using our watercolors or neo colors or the watercolor, that can reconstitute. Okay. Hey, Twinkle Toes, Terry, who else am I missing? So there, you can you see that color? I think it's best if I just leave it down there for color. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the back. And again, you're going to see the pencil marks here, but I want it to look like wood on the back. So that's okay in this case. But if you don't want to see pencil marks, you need to like put it on kind of smooth because it's hard to get rid of those pencil marks with ink tints. But I, that's fine for me on this in this case. Okay, so there's the like the aubergine color. It's called uh, <clears throat> dark purple, and then I'm going to use the dusky purple too. All right, so I'm just going to set that aside to dry. Move my little swatch out of the way. You learn the hard way. You wrecked a page. <laughs> oh, now I dissolve all the material on the page. Okay. Yeah. I just, here's what I do when I'm doing it. I just imagine it's all water uh, soluble again. So anything that's on the page, like I'm not going to put a varnish on it or, you know, anything like that. So, you know, I just think, oh, any of it could be watercolor. Unless I know I'm doing it in acrylic washes, acrylic paint washes and pencil. Yeah. All right, so now here we go on to this. And again, even though it's not going through, I still put cardstock behind. So now I'm just going to start doing, rolling it out. It's going to be very vibrant. And if you get too much, wipe some off so you can still see your color book underneath. Your uh, lines and shadows and all that. Because it's really concentrated at this stage. Was it pretty? See how those colors look good together? I think so. All right, so I'm just going to start. Moving it down and around, smoothing it out. And it's going to have a watercolory look, which is fine to me. I want that while, until I go to shade. Hey, Flint Rock Rebecca, how you doing? Anybody else popping in? Thanks everybody for being here. We have over 100 people today. Thanks for being here. Hope you all stick around. We're going to do another pack o giveaway you know this is week four remember i made i have 40 of them and i, I want to do one a week for the whole year um well week four. Oh, i think i need looks like i need to focus again guys i don't know we'll see anytime you move things around under the camera it goes i don't like that white under there refocus me <laughs> Hey, Zoe. And I got to watch. Carrie did a show yesterday, which there was too much football hubbub going on around here to watch any streams yesterday afternoon. If y'all don't know, Hubster is big Falcon fan since 1966. And when they played yesterday with the possibility and they did win so that they have go to the Super Bowl in a couple weeks yeah there was no there's no living with that <laughs> he's so excited it's like it's almost like he's the, it's like he's the coach he's so excited all right so again I, I, I gotta be conscious not to oversaturate my paper 
because it's not the paint or the ink or the product that's the problem. It's the wetness of it. Thanks, Carol Renee. And good morning, by the way. Oh, my goodness. Was he happy? All right. So now let me do a test with the um, dusky purple. Let me just do a little bit up here at the top and see what this is going to look like. I don't want it too much the same. I want it. Yeah, it's just enough difference, I think. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. I'm going to blend that up into the tree. I'm not sure if it's going to be quite a lot. I mean, I want it di a different enough. Let's go ahead and put some along this bottom right along here. And then I think I'll get a light, one shade lighter. And you can use, you know, mix your own watercolors, your brush markers, your neo colors, any of it. So just because I'm using ink tints doesn't mean that any of the other stuff won't work. All right. And I'm going over those little dots because I'll just uh, either highlight or shadow those when it's dry. Okay, so I'm liking that. Hmm. Do I want these tassels? I think I want these tassels this darker color too. <laughs> I don't mind. I really don't. I mean, you know. Yeah. He's he's always it's not like it's he just woke up one day and turned into a you know, Falcon fan. And I got to say he's not he's not uh He'll watch football, but he's not like watching every game. Can't miss a game. It's not like that. It's just the Falcons. <laughs> All right, so I'm going in here with the uh, dusky purple, that aubergine color. And then I'll put another color of purple on the other. So hopefully, y'all can y'all see okay, guys, I hope. When you do a double page spread, I don't like to zoom in too much because I'm going back and forth and back and forth. Trying to get part one to low. Part two is, oh, you got part two up, but part one is have given you troubles uploading. So, yeah, Carrie is I carry love. And uh, I'm not sure what she did yesterday because I didn't watch it, but I'm glad she recorded. So, and then these little tassels. I'll go back in with like, you know, loose tassels coming across. Those are fun to do. I did that in the, which is the, uh, I keep wanting to say midnight, but it's not midnight. What's the uh, clock one? With the tassels, let me think. Not lost ocean, but I think it's up here on my shelf. Hang on. Not out of time. What's that thing called? Um, yeah, of course I can't put my hand right on it. Anyway, we did tassels in that book. But I can't seem to put my hand on it. Magic, not, no, no, that's not it. No. I can't see chat right now. Y'all are probably all talking to me. Yelling at me. Here it is, Daria's song. The Time Chamber. Thank you. See, I come sit down. There y'all are. Say in the time chamber. <laughs> if Hubster cooked ham for the playoff, I bet he made something else. No, we just, uh, we had ham. <laughs> so this is the time chamber, Daria song. And um, there's some tassels that I was going to show you. And there's lots of tassels in here, actually. But um, here, these are the ones I want to show you. See how those are colored with a couple shades, couple shades of uh, purple, and then oh, here's a good one. And you see how we overlap them to make them look like they're fluffy, like that. That's what I want to do with these. 
Yeah. I tagged you in Facebook photo of your swatching intense. Oh, okay. All right. You like the time chamber? Yeah, we've we've done a few pages in there. Okay. So, still damp. Let's go ahead and do the light purple. Let's see. Which one of these did I want to test out on my sheet here? Just as long as it's lighter. That's too red. I had that one out earlier. Don't want that one's too red. Let's try this one. This one is Deep Rose. Mm, no, too red. Here, let's go with this one. This one is um, Red Violet. Well, that's even going to be redder, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I kind of need a lilac color. Uh, all right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my brushes. I'm going to go back to my real brush, which this one is called Light Violet. Let's do a little test in the tray. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want, a lighter violet. So, all right, so I'm going to just, uh-oh, don't drop it on the thing here. I'm just going to put some out and pick it up. And do a wash over the whole thing because it's real light. Need more out just to give it a wash. It's very light, but that's good because then I can shade right either with more watercolor or with pencils. So I don't know, I just think it's fun sometimes to use a little bit of everything in your arsenal <laughs> you know you can mix and match and use whatever I'm not going directly on here because it's going to be so let me just do a little of a section so you can see this side will be shadowed so I'll go on there you see how dark that is I really want it real light although that's the shadowed side so it's okay <clears throat> there we go so it's just that first initial wash. All right, let's move down here. And the same thing all across here. I'm going to want a wash all across. I thought I heard my mailman out there. I can't believe he came yesterday. I guess because maybe, oh, oh I got a little orange on that. See, I need a clean spot right there. Um, I can't believe he came yesterday and brought... Carol Renee sent me the new um, Bennett Klein character book for my birthday. And so they delivered it yesterday while I was doing an impromptu stream. I thought that was odd because I usually don't deliver on Sunday unless it's like the uh, Christmas or something where they're so backed up. I don't know, so there we go. All right, so this is going to be a little jewel down here. And I did find some places on Pinterest, and you can find them easy enough. Um, look up uh, how to draw or how to color jewels, jewels, or crystals and or crystals, you know, something like that. And you'll see all kinds of pictures of how to color uh, jewels and crystals. Hey, Julie Topaz. All right, where's my lid? I don't want to lose my lid here. So let's put that somewhere because I'm using the water brush. But. Okay, so there we go. We got that base done. So that's that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this and we'll start doing a little shading. Well, maybe do I want to do shading yet or do I want to maybe put some, do the mushrooms and or the tree. Let's go ahead and do the tree because I already picked the color for that. I still love digital art, so many colors. I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah, yeah, Digi, I would love to learn Digi one of these days, but it's, you know, it's a time thing. You know, it's like anything else. I mean, I, I've done a little bit, you know, a little bit of Photoshop and uh, elements and things, but nothing, excuse me, nothing fancy, because it, you know, the, the time, it's all about the time. You, yeah, now I know UPS delivers, um, they're contracted with UPS Dex. Okay, 
So, yeah, this was my mailman, though. This was my actual mailman drove up in the truck, put something in the box. Okay, so let's see. I think I want to go ahead and do the tree. And I'm just wondering if it's not much different from just, let me see here. I'm going to compare my colors because it'll be easier for me to just do a bunch of trees with this than, than putting it in the tray and taking it off the tray. So let me just kind of compare the colors here. So this is in the real brush. Let's just test that out down here. And then let me just test out. Yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different. So I almost want to go with a mix of these two browns. Let's see here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So let me clean me off a little watercolor spot right here. Just so there's not a bunch of green, it's going to turn it gray. And I'm going to use these two browns. Maybe a little of that, too. I just want a little bit darker than Sienna. Just a little bit darker. Oh, yeah, USPS. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about UPS. I'm sorry, Suzanne. I thought you said, um, I thought you were talking about UPS, not USPS. Yeah. Okay, so now let me go ahead. And again, I have a black paper here. So that if I go right off the edge, I'm not going to, you know, get it on the the book itself so again I don't care if it's smooth I want it water kind of modeled looking because we're going to do shading and stuff so I'm just going to start by getting the tree am I close enough guys for y'all to be able to really see anything because I can zoom in you know I try to accommodate y'all seeing everything and there's little blueberries here and there. Which, remember, this in her book here. And I think that's some moss right there. Looks maybe like some moss. So let's put a little, we'll put a little bit of green in there, too. Um, I try to so that y'all can see. But if I'm moving all over the place, you know, back and forth like this. <laughs> if I'm zoomed in, it's a little tricky. But, I don't know. Let, well, I'll, let me go ahead and zoom in one, guys. And refocus. Hang on. Where's my little, my little sherry card here? Let's focus. Just a little bright off there. Okay. How's that, guys? Hopefully. All right. Let me get my chat locked in. There. All right. So I'm just over here getting a little bit of the brown. I gotta add a little bit more water to my watercolor palette. And uh, yeah. So anyway, in this book, it looks like they make all kinds of wine or medicinal things. Everything's like blueberries. I noticed. And I haven't, you know, really read the whole or you know thought about the whole storyline. But it seems like blueberries are a theme. What did you do or draw with a blue pencil? Um, if I'm sketching, I draw with the blue pencil because two reasons. One, it's easy to erase. Okay, I think I'm going to do these stems. Uh, one, it's easy to erase. That's too dark. Where's my... And, the, and it doesn't smear. I'm going to use a couple shades of different shades of brown on the mushroom stems here along with because the, the stems come along the bottom and then the tree comes along the top that'll make it cohesive together but it's just a pencil just a pencil what do, what dorothy say she's gonna have a fried oh she's eating in front of us she's eating a fried egg sandwich i don't even eat my grilled cheeses in front of you dot <laughs> So I've got a couple shades of brown over here so that when I put them on, they're kind of like mixing, but it's light. I'm picking it up off the palette so it's light. So you can still see the black color book lines underneath the ink. And I have my black, my black paper, see, under it. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, a little, a little less. Let's water that down just a little. And we'll, we'll do at least, you know, shading on one of the houses today. But, it, you know, when you do things real time like this, it is, you can see, and I've had people mention that they like the real time videos because they can see how long something actually takes. You know, and again, nothing wrong with speeded up videos, especially if you have limited time. But you kind of get the impression that you can color a page like this in 15 minutes. If it's speeded up. What pen do I use to doodle in coloring books that is waterproof? Um, I have a couple different ones. Um, I found these are at Hobby Lobby. Now I do have dip, you know, I've got calligraphy nibs and 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 Chinese ink and some other inks. Okay, but if you're talking about just a regular like pen pen. I found these black liners by Pacific Arc at Hobby Lobby. And I think they're in a pack of four. They come in four size, you know, four different sizes. I think they're $10. Of course, I always use a coupon, so you can get them for like, you know, f 5 to $6 for four. But I think there's a 0 0.05, a 0 0.1, a, or no, a 0 0.05, a 0 0.1, a 0.2, and a 0.3. So... Uh, you know, these little, like that, you know, technical pens like this. And these are waterproof. Um, but I like these kind of pens. If you're, I'm going to draw, you know, something uh, that I'm going to do washes over. Like this is what I use when I drew all my animals, Christmas animals and the Hanukkah animals. When I drew those at Christmas, I use this and my... And I'm not sure if this is 100% waterproof, but let's see. My brush pen. Yeah. My brush pen. Black brush pen. But it never ran, so I guess it's waterproof. I didn't, you know, wasn't really a lot concerned with it. I figured if it smeared a little, it was okay. <laughs> but I should test that. But th that's what I use when I'm drawing, inking something. And then I also have, let me finish this, and then I'll show you some of my inks, okay? If y'all want to see some inks. And again, I'd have to test them because I don't remember which ones exactly are waterproof and which ones are not. Because I don't ink that much anymore. I don't do calligraphy really anymore. I do a little bit of calligraphy, calligraphy for a local um, karate dojo on their big certificates. But other than that, I don't do any professional calligraphy anymore because most, what I found is most people, unless you're the Queen of England or something that, you know, wants hand-done calligraphy, it's kind of rare for people to want hand-done calligraphy. I mean, I'm sure it's done. It's still done on, like on Jewish wedding certificates and stuff like that. But you can print, you know, people just print out their calligraphy, right? Um... So it's just not as as um, popular or as requested or needed since we're in the computer age as it was back when I was doing it in the 80s. Ask Janet; she'll she'll tell you because Janet knows too. She does d has done inking before. So okay, so there we go. We started that. Now I'm going to keep working up here on the tree. Same color. Um, or same colors, I should say. Just carrying it. I'm just kind of keeping it so it's not oversaturated because I want it just a wash so I can shade with uh, pencils. Okay, let's kind of just keep it kind of watering here. I'm not, you know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being so extra careful like, oh my gosh, I touched, I got a little bit of brown on that green leaf. Oh no, I've ruined the page. I don't ever look at it like that. I look at it like in nature, you're going to have many colors on everything. So if you get like, I'm just going to go over that leaf for an example. 
So when I go to color that green, it'll just be a darker green or I'll have a little bit of brown in it or something like that. So just because you don't stay in the lines, don't panic, because especially if you're doing nature things, um, it's okay because that's how it would be in nature. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just getting up here on the corners and all. And that's, you know, when you're watercoloring, that kind of gives it that, that, I don't want to say realistic, but those, it's more realistic color than just a flat brown that you do like out of a color book. I mean, out of a color crayon on a color book. You know, if you can add light, like these washes like this, it really makes it look more natural is the word I'm looking for. Natural. Becca had so much fun using the watercolors. In... She did so good, too. Can I show the picture on uh, Insta from Instagram of the grandchildren, Julie? You know, I mean, I know you put them on Instagram, but, you know, I don't know if you want me to put them on YouTube. <laughs> that's, you know, because that's where these videos are going. So, but uh, Julie Topaz posted some pictures of her grandchildren coloring, and she said water coloring, and she really liked it. Y'all still talking about food? <laughs> sure, okay, I can, okay. So, uh, yeah, let me finish this tree here. Yeah. I drew both of uh, Julie Topaz's grandchildren's portraits a couple years back. If y'all don't know, I do uh, color pencil portraits. If y'all need, if you need portraits done, then email me. And we can do so many a year, though, you know. Okay, so let's see. I think of this tree kind of goes a little branch here. There's another little branch right there. Okay, so you can see how mottled it is. Splotchy, I guess splotchy is a good word. And that, and I want it like that so that when I go to use color pencil, you have that splotchy already under it. It just gives it a, I love that look. And I think inside this key, since I'm probably not going to do the background black, but I'm thinking I want that little hole in that key to be black with stars. Like you're peeking through. So oh, let me find, first do the Julie Topaz thing. And then, um, oh, it's so good to have you, Mick, uh, Julie uh, McD. Thank you so much for being here. We love it when new people come. Thanks so much. Aw, Julie Topaz says that they're treasured and they're in the studio on the bookcases. Okay, I think you're Julie Topaz here too, right, Julie? Or Julie Topaz Girl, rather? Yeah, the Topaz Pearl Girl. Okay, there you are. All right, so here we go. So here's her grandchildren. Yes, I, we, we do grandchildren here. Just saying. Just Hey, Miss Vicky B. Yes, we're safe, Miss Vicky B. And I saw Miss Vicky B finished. Um, if y'all don't follow Miss Vicky B and her planners and color books over there, she finished her camel from Imagimorphia or Anamorphia. I forget which one it is. Okay, so here's one. There's there's one of, and she has gingers, which means she has redheaded grandchildren. There's one right there, coloring that one, and then the other one. Here, let's see, let me go over here. Here's, well, this picture might be, well, let me, she has four pictures here. So hang on, guys. Mary, and then here's Rebecca. Oh, that one doesn't show the picture. Here's her coloring, here. Here she is coloring with watercolor. Oh, look how cute. They've grown up so much. They've grown up so much. I don't know if you, um, I probably have the portraits. You might have the portraits on Instagram. I don't know, Julie. 
I don't have the portraits, the photographs of them right here. I don't know if you posted them on Instagram. It's been a couple of years. I'll be scrolling here for a while. Julie's kind of active on Instagram. I'll tell you, if you, if you want to follow someone on Pinterest that knows her way around Pinterest, follow Julie. Um, Topaz Pearl Girl is on Pinterest, and you'll find your way around Pinterest. <clears throat> so now let me go to Miss Vicki B, and we're going to show off her finished piece. And it's in um, Imagimorphia. I couldn't remember. So here's Miss Vicky B. Finished her camel. Sorry, guys. It's wanting to... Um, she finished her camel in Imagimorphia. So Miss Vicky B. does color booking. And, of course, y'all know her as the planner lady. <laughs> okay, now let me take a second while this is kind of drying for just a minute. Let me kind of come over here so you can see something. I'll show you some of the inks somebody asked about. Okay, so I can't remember which all, let me, I don't remember, I can't promise you, I can tell you, unless we test them all, which ones are waterproof and which ones are not. But I'll show you some of the, and this is just the black inks. Hang on. That's not going to, probably not going to be all of them either. Uh, this one... F and W. Okay, I got Higgins and some other ones. Um, Liquid Tex and Higgins, and they're up on a top more high shelf. So I'm not going to get a chair up there. I'm just going to show you the ones that I could just like reach for. Okay, so let me kind of set this over here. All right, so here's some of my inks. Oh, <laughs> bad news. Let's get something to put it on. Let's at least get this calendar because you're not going to be able to see. All right, so some of the inks I have are Black Cat. You can see, <laughs> use this one a lot. And this one is waterproof. So some of them I'm not going to be able to tell you. I believe this one is um, waterproof as well. Oh, gosh, guys, we're now, now we're too... Let me see if I can just move my lamp a little closer because now we're <laughs> too dark. So... Um, and you can probably get, some of these you can get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but for the most part, I think like I got this at Jet Pens. Um, you can get F&W acrylic ink. Now, this is waterproof, but some things you can't put in a, don't try to put these in your brush pens. Ask Janet which ones you could put in brush pens. She's, and then these are Dr. Martin's Black Star Matte and Black Star High Carb, and these are waterproof. These are both waterproof. And when I'm using these, like when we drew the animals at Christmas, I just used a brush. And I put them in a in a little one of those little um, trays, the little, um, not a tray. Um. These that are made for the rubbing out the sticks, you can see. They're made to rub the sticks in calligraphy ink. And, and, and like water down and melt the ink with rubbing. And um, I just use it to put my ink in. And then I use a brush. And if you take a brush, I'm not going to do it now, but I'm just going to show you what I mean. So if you take a brush and you have your ink in there, see how it's slanted? So all the ink kind of goes down in here. And then I can just take my brush and like pull it like this. Dip it and pull and kind of roll the brush. So I'm rolling my brush. And using this and this can get kind of crusty and you just have to kind of like peel it out so these and I get you can get all these on I get them at jet pins pins for a doodle um, if, if I'm doodling anything it's gonna be something like with these these black black liner Pacific arc or sometimes if I'm writing and doodling I just use my sharpie pen not sharpie marker the sharpie pen Okay, this is a Sharpie pen. Okay, not a marker. Markers will go right through your paper. Sharpie pens, these do not go through your paper. Okay, so, but if I'm just sketching and doodling with pen, then I'll use something like this. I'm usually not very particular. I just like it tiny. Okay, and I just noticed I forgot to do my nails again. Then you can always get stuff. Now, this is really old here, this uh, Kohenor. This is like what you, we, Janet and I would used to use in the old um, pens. 
that would you'd have to clean those babies out every day because if you used them in, at work then there's uh things like the uh these calligraphy inks like this or like this traditional chinese ink and you can get these at uh like daiso and and i think this one you can get at hobby lobby i think you can get this one at hobby lobby and this one at daiso you can probably get them both at daiso but yeah so but these you can get at jet pens these these and i'm sure you can get them on amazon and other places guys i'm sure you can get them at other places but um i get them at jet pens because it's easy for me to order from jet pens like this this is probably from hobby lobby i don't use it because it leaves a shine the acrylic inks can leave a shine um these don't well the matte one or the high carb well i think it's matte one doesn't either but one's blacker than the other and one's not doesn't leave a shine so it depends on what you're doing right and what kind of calligraphy work or inking work you're doing but i put my ink in here squeeze it out or dropper it out and just go like this with a brush and pull it off of here same thing with a calligraphy pen like a nibbed pen oh whoa 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 Same thing for this, like a nib pen. I can just put the ink in here and instead of like dipping in a bottle or anything like that, I just dip my pen in here and kind of scrape it off a little bit. Scrape it off a little. And you can get these at Hobby Lobby, Daiso, um, yeah. Did I use, that's what I'm talking about. The Rotrings, yeah, mm-hmm. Rapidograph, um, there's a couple brands. They're a pain. I do not own any of them anymore. And and I don't want to. Why would I want to mess with a Rotring Rapidiograph? No, and if you're using, if you're watching this and you use one, don't email me. If you have the time to clean those babies, go for it. I think Janet has a, a sonic cleaner. Why use those if you can use this? <laughs> That's this is my outlook. <laughs> I'll use this. If only the waterproof ones, TNT, that's why I was specifying. You have to make sure it's a waterproof, waterproof ink, okay? Um, and, of course, when I'm doing calligraphy, I'm not really, I mean, I'll use, you know, like Chinese. Uh, I can use any of these for calligraphy. It's not like I'm anybody's going to be varnishing them or anything because I'm doing certificates poems quotes and again i don't do those anymore except for um uh except for uh what do you call it uh, a few certificates that are oversized certificates like um like i said a, a, a karate dojo hires me to do their big certificates like they're like I don't know, two feet long? They're big, big, oversized. That's not going to fit through your standard printer to print out the calligraphy. Um, can you, let's see, have you ever tried? No, I've not tried Jane Davenport's black pen. The only, I, you know, I've tried her pencils and I bought her mermaid uh, markers, which are not waterproof, obviously. You know, they're water, water soluble. So, no, I've not tried her pen. Is, her, is that, uh, do you know if her black pen is waterproof i guess it would be because she paints over it right so you like the process of, yeah see it's too time consuming to grind my own ink i don't i don't do this for meditation <laughs> that's just me i know people love it people can grind their own yeah i, I don't do it i got too i got too much to do <laughs> Okay, so now let me put this at least off my table here, guys. Hang on. And Janet was talking about some of her inks and pens, and uh, I didn't. I only got to. I was only there for you know thirty minutes or something. But Janet's talked about it, so she probably has a full-on recording about it. So. And I have other ones up here too, guys. Uh, like I said, that I really just don't use that much. Dr. Martin's, I don't know that, it, you know, there's some subtleties, I'm sure, between the brands. I'm not, I'm not an expert, guys. You'll have to probably just Google it. 
Okay, so let me move this pin this out of the way. Let's move the color book back in, which is, there we go. How far we got so far. Um, so yeah, so that's what we got so far. All right, let me make a little space here. Where's my blotter brush cap? Don't want to lose that. I just had it. There it is. Just keep it here. All right. Don't want to lose my little doors. We've got our little doors here. That one's going to go on there. This one's going to go on here. And then we just cut a little slit in there after everything's said and done. Again, I don't want to cut a slit in here and add water and have it all seep through and all that. Then you just put the little tab in there. And then you can open and close the little door. I said, that's so cute. So cute. Okay. Now, um, oh, I wanted to do a little of this moss down here. And, I'll, and I got some leftover mossy green here. And it's just a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of that moss here. It just looks like, you know, the uh, sheet moss. I think that's what it's called when you buy it. <laughs> I don't know what it's called when it's on the tree. But the flat moss you can pick up in sheets. That's kind of what it looks like there. All right. So I think I'm going to go ahead and while I'm doing... The green, where is that green I was using? Did I leave it, put it away, where is it? Um, let's see which one, maybe it's just the mid-green, is that the one I was using? I think the mid-green, that'll be good, it's called light olive, mid-green. And I just want to start coloring some of these leaves. And I want to do that little, I want to do the center of this. So I'm going to come over here. If you all have any questions, hopefully we're zoomed in far enough. Let's see if I can get some of it on there maybe. Because I do want a little bit dark right at the stem. And this is a light green. I might be able to do the bulk of it right out of the thing here. Because it's light. I can still see through it. But I don't want to get it too. I think I feel better doing it on my tray. Doing it on my tray. I have more control over how much I'm putting down. Then we'll do a little shading with some pencil. And um, again, I haven't decided on the background. I just, I'm thinking in this book, I want to keep the backgrounds all white. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so used to painting in the backgrounds with acrylic washes and things. Or even watercolor washes like we're doing in the uh, Polish Dream one. And if you're just joining us, this book right here, let me show you again. This is the um, Clara Markova Czech Republic girl. And Kelly sent me this for my birthday. And it's a sign, I, th I think it was translated Magical Delight, somebody told me. And also, um, Vicki B, is she still here? Vicki B, are you still here? Oh, I can't see. But Vicki B says she can read Polish, so she could translate. You need that book, Vicki. You need to get you that book and, and read it. You need a video on it. Let me see if she's still here. Um, she might have already, because she's, you know, she's a busy lady. Oh, there, she's still there. Okay, so yeah, Miss Vicki B reads Polish, so she said she could translate this book for us. So she needs to get this and do a video on it. You need to, to uh, translate this for us in English, Miss Vicki B. <laughs> Just saying. Like, you don't have nothing else to do. You don't have anything else to do but translate our color books. <laughs> oh, I missed a little spot of orange right there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I gotta, I gotta say something to shout out our Miss Mickey B. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if she says anything. <laughs> okay. Sunshine peeping, th sunshine peeping through would be nice. Yeah, that would be good. That would be nice. I mean, I could maybe do that on a couple. I don't know that I'd want to do... I don't want to do the same exact sunshine peeking through on every page. 
but I'm trying to not do my usual dark backgrounds in this particular book and this particular book so yeah um, yeah Miss Vicki B still in chat but she may have you know she's got babies to take care of and stuff too so you know as some of you do you know some of you got your little ones at home you got to run around take care of them all right, I'm just putting some more on the tray over here. See, right here. And then pick it up. How am I doing? I got a little bit of water left in here. Yeah, there's quite a few girls in Oz. So if y'all are... Um, in Australia, make sure y'all do a meetup with each other. There's Ozzy. There's there's quite a few girls. Jen Oz. I'm just not thinking in my head right now who all's there from Oz. So you can just see. I'm just coloring the leaves. Hey, Pepper Kitty. How you doing? So we're going to work on this page for probably about 30 more minutes. That'll give us a two-hour time frame on this particular page. I try to get a lot done, but, you know, we are chatty here, too. So if you're watching this recording, I am talking to people, and i got to do my giveaway. Don't let me forget. After, the after this, i got to do my giveaway, my weekly giveaway. And I'm not peeking into each envelope. I made up 40 envelopes for the year, again. I, when I get to, you know, through the 40, I'll make up, you know, another 15, or, well, 12. Because <laughs> I want to do one a week, right? And uh, um, I made them up. Me and Denise made them up when she was here a couple what, months ago when we made those. A month, month ago? November, I think we made them up. And uh, so we packaged them up. And so I don't know what's in each individual pack. Do you own, do you have your own? No, I don't, Melody. I just use Hubsters. I just use Hubsters. I mean, as, as for two people in the same house, you know, I, we just didn't think, you know. But I know some people said, I want to, I want to know what you have a wish list. If I do that, I'll make my own because Hubsters got his own wish list. You know, I don't want to put my stuff on his wish list. I don't, I don't even know if he has one really. But, uh, <laughs> so, I know, and I got to do my post office box thing, you know, guys, it's, right now I'm just waiting, I'm hoping this week I get my new lenses for my glasses, and I've got five commissions stacked up waiting on me, so, I got thing, got a lot to do. Welcome from Germany, Zoe. Think we, uh, Petka, are you in Germany? Petka Anita is in Germany. Oh, yeah, there you go. I just saw her pop and say something to Zoe. I'm just going to keep moving here. Keep moving. And I did, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to still, I'm going to work on her behind the scenes. But um, somebody sent me an awesome birthday through Amazon gift. And I asked if I could shout her out. And she goes, no, no, don't do that. Kind of like Kelly does. Kelly always goes, no, no, don't shout me out. But anyway, but when I get the gift, I'm going to, I'll do it here, of course. But I got to get her permission to let me say it was from her. Oh, look, here's one of the dark brown leaves. So again, when I go over it with the green, see, it just makes it like a little darker olive. It's not showing up on camera. So don't worry about if you get out of lines. Bunny says she has an Amazon. You keep pressing the buy button. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> So anyway, I'll see if when I when I get it and show it, 
um, she got it for my birthday. I'll ask her again if I can shout her out. I got. I'll email her and ask her. Cause uh, I don't want to embarrass people. You know, if they give you something, they don't. They sometimes don't want people to know who gave you the thing. So yeah, I gotta be. I gotta be polite. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Carol. Carol's, I mean, uh, Carol. Janet streams at one, which is a couple hours. She can, links are open. Y'all are welcome to put all the links in. Well, within reason, guys. I mean, you know, we are pretty good about not spamming. And, uh, you know, we know, obviously, no porn or anything like that. Because sometimes we do have little kids. Not that, that, not that that's the only reason not to put porn. <laughs> but you know what I mean. We're, we're all good about stuff here. Sharing and, and being respectful. <laughs> I'm getting all these leaves done, guys. Just going around getting all these leaves. I'm just rubbing some off in the tray. Picking it up with the water brush. Rubbing it off in the tray. Because I want it light. I mean, I can go right in here with the brush, but that's almost like another layer that I'm not ready for yet. You know what I mean, Vern? So let me just keep moving around here. And then, as soon as we do these leaves, I'm going to do the giveaway. So maybe my mods can perk up and get ready to herd, herd cats. No, not yet. Not yet, Bunny. No. Not yet. I don't know if where where you're sending something from. Like when Kelly sent me the book from um, from Poland, it took like a month. So I don't know what you're sending me, Bunny. But if it's something from Europe or something, it may just take a while. You know? How should you store your watercolor markers? I store mine on my on the side. I store them on on the side. I store them, yeah. They're in, a, they're in a pencil case, but they're on their side. I would be afraid to store them like that and thinking they may leak or something. I don't know that that would happen. And Eileen and some of the other girls that use these much more than I do may be able to tell you. They may storm like this and have no problem. I think Jean, Jean, don't you store your straight standing up? I don't think Jean's had any problem with hers leaking or anything. But that's just in my head, I think, you know. It's kind of dangerous to store markers on end, but, you know. Don't ever call me perky. <laughs> okay, Terry, excuse me. Excuse that um, little uh, faux pas. <laughs> uh, let me do these leaves right here. Excuse our little faux pas there, Terry. Uh, Terry said don't ever call her perky. Uh-oh, got kind of see I went a little wild right there. I, I look up at chat and I, I sometimes go, whoop. <laughs> Eileen has hers laying down. But I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw Jean had hers in a in a box, in a house that she built for hers. Jean builds, her, builds furniture or houses for her markers and her supplies. <laughs> I tease her all the time. I tease our Jean. Yeah, she builds, she builds them uh, houses. Well, I don't know, um, Bunny, you might want to call or ask or write email because, you know, or if you want to tell me what you sent or I don't know. I don't know. I haven't got it. I would be, I would tell you if I did, Bunny. Terry says, thank you, Dee Dee, for not calling her perky. I mean, I'm, I do good to have uh, Terry trouble here at 9 a.m. Just saying. She's not a morning person. And I know some of you are. <laughs> <laughs> just pop just pop in a link uh tnt just post the link links are open that means you can just post a link right there in chat and you uh and we'll all see a direct link now if you send us someplace naughty not that you would <laughs> then um yeah we'll be seeing you <laughs> i know you're not tnt i'm just saying though 
<laughs> my mood, my mods have boots. They have boots on. And especially Terry, who, you know, she's not perky in the morning. <laughs> don't be, don't be uh, messing with the non-perky mods. Terry, uh, Carrie's kind of perky, though. Carrie's pretty perky. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> she's the perky one, I think. Uh, Eileen is the bossy enabler. I say it in love. I mean, I do. I say it in love. Eileen's our E T E E, our enabler. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sherry's not here right now. So let's talk about Sherry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so let me move that out of the way. Let me find my little cap here for my water brush. And we'll show you what we got. I think I'm going to back out while we do the. She's saggy in the evening. <laughs> oh my gosh, you girls. <laughs> saggy. Saggy in the evening. Okay, let me uh let me make sure my um let's get my lamp here and everything. Let's uh let me go let me go back to this for just a minute. Oh wait, let's not lose our doors. <laughs> Don't want to lose my little doors. Let's see if we can brighten this up just a little, guys. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I need to refocus, but I think you can see there. I love the color. See, we've got a sienna. We have an olive green. We have an aubergine, you know, a dusky purple with a like a lavender purple. We have um, a, an uh, ochre, a yellow ochre color and an orange color. And these, this is the same color as the tree. So, yeah. And then again, here's going to be our doors. This will go like this, and that will go like that. When we get, and the, the little tabs will be, you know, cut in. So, yeah. I don't know. Somebody's telling Terry to buy a bra. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to ask. Uh, oh, okay. Well, Miss Vicky, I figured you had to step away for a minute. We were just saying that you need to get this book and you need to do it on your stream, I mean on your show, on your YouTube channel, and, and read it to us. Read the translation. It's, I don't even know that I could show it to you here where you could see it well enough to translate because it's in cursive. But you need to do a video on that book. Just saying. Just saying, Miss Vicky. All right, so let's do our giveaway. Again, I don't know what's in this pack, but it's week four. All right, so let me get my random.org. Let me, I'll explain how it works. <laughs> Gotta love the giveaways, I'll tell you. So what, what, what happens? <laughs> you will, okay. Yeah, I, I think you get, um, I think you, you have to get it from Poland unless, you know, you know, more things change all the time. You know, more people are reprinting in here, and, and I don't know the how timelines of the color books getting here. Um, let's see. Let me get random.org. So I'm going to, when you see me type, when you see me type in the word go, then you'll put in a number between 1 and 100. Let me get a post-it note here. And a marker. <clears throat> You'll type in a number. One number only. The closest. Well, I'll just set this right here for now. The closest without going over. You've missed us, Terry. Well, you just got to hurry up and unpack and get back into the swing of being here. And with all, all the you streamers. Um, the closest without going over. One number only will win our weekly pack of goodies. Okay? So, <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I know there's a lag, so I'm kind of waiting a second for my voice to catch up with, you know, y'all hearing me. Y'all hearing me? <laughs> One number only, closest to the random.org number without going over. Okay? And we're off. Brrr. 
<laughs> and a hundred numbers pop up immediately. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's like herding cats. I'm telling you, herding cats. And then we're going to do a little bit more shading for a few minutes. We'll, we'll start on this little bit here, on this one. Okay, so let me make sure I put a note here that we are using, while, while y'all are doing that, that we're using ink tints and zig markers and prismas to shade <clears throat> on this page so I'll, I'll put that note in here so that we don't forget okay get your numbers in everybody get them in so i'm going to type in stop so get your number in <clears throat> Wait for just another 30 seconds. When I think everybody can see numbers going, rolling by. Okay. Last call for a number. Last call. One number only. Suzanne, you put in two numbers. Seriously, Suzanne? Seriously? <laughs> One number only. It's going to be the first person closest to the number. All right. Hey, Orla. Put in a number, Orla. If you're just getting here, anybody else, make it quick. Numbers, please. <laughs> Number, please. I don't want to leave anybody out. Okay, I'm not seeing any more numbers. Okay, stop. All right, here we go. Random.org. Okay, we're going to come over here to our little generate box. I have between 1 and 100. Going to generate a number. 62. The closest to 62 without going over 62 and my mods will help me help me mods help me if you don't help me i'm gonna have to go visit bandit <laughs> It doesn't matter if you have more than 100 people, Suzanne. It doesn't matter. Nobody's, you know, it's the first person that gets it. I could say between 1 and 25. And the first person that gets the number is the winner. So, yeah. We got, yeah. But, yeah. It doesn't matter about that. So, but thank you for being concerned. I'll put, I'm, you know, Suzanne, if you come visit me, I'm going to put you in charge of the uh, giveaways. <laughs> We'll put Suzanne in charge of herding cats. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm waiting for um, Eileen and Carrie and Janet and Terry. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I get I get the giggles at it the whole thing. The closest to sixty-two without going over. Okay, so. Terry's got one that she thinks is right. Carrie's got one. It has to be under, the closest without going over. So far, Carrie's got it. I mean, not Carrie doesn't, didn't win it. Carrie's got the winner. Carrie's picked the winner. So it looks like it's Jan T. Jan T had 58. So two of my mods agreed. I wait till two mods agree. So Jan T had 58. So Jan T. Yeah. So email me your address, Jan, and I'll send you out your surprise package. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to let that kind of settle down for a minute. 
and i'm going to color this for a few minutes and then about ten more minutes on this this page yeah so congratulations jan t all right so now let me come over here and i'm going to get my prismas i'm going to move the watercolor stuff out of the way just set this all over on the floor and i have the bulk of my well i have a lot of my prismas in a, in a silverware tray here it's not all it's you know y'all see how i keep my prisma colors i keep them like this in bundles like this <laughs> this is how i keep i keep them by color families like purples then i have light green and dark green light blue dark blue and if you have them in bundles like this then you can just do this bam <laughs> and pick a color so i like having these in my you know my because i use these all the time these are my go-to pencils prismacolor Premier. well and some sanford some barrels but yeah the prismacolor Premier. so you can just clean, fan them out and pick your colors if they're rubber banded it's just an easy way to keep your colors together and but these are the colors i use like all the time so i kind of have my yellows and beiges my reds pinks blues green a couple of greens and they're purples some flesh colors and just random stuff so you know i use these all the time but all my bundles are like this so now i want to go over here though and i want to get out like yellow ochre and i gotta sharpen where's my sharpeners okay so let me sharpen a yellow ochre and i know it's tiny I have I have new ones too, but you know. <laughs> oh, I've sent stuff to you before, Jan. Oh, okay. Okay, well, good. Then if that's the case, then I'll have your address. Thank you. All right, so I want a yellow ochre. I'm gonna want like this is a like what is this one? That's not the one I'm looking for. I'm gonna darker. And I have to get into a bundle, I think, because I need a sienna. Ah, here we go. Is this a sienna? What is this one? Henna. Henna might. Eh, it's a little, mm, maybe. I'd rather have sienna than henna. Let's see. What's this one? Uh, I'm not sure. Some of, you know, if I sharpen off, I try to tell you guys the names of my pencils, but if I've sharpened them off, you know. All right. So here's a newer one. Here is pumpkin. Let's go with pumpkin. Let's go with cad red, uh, cad orange. And then I want this yellow ochre, which I have another one in here. Don't have to necessarily use a stub, but so we'll go with that. And I need an orange. couple shades of orange that's poppy red but poppy red is an orange guys trust me poppy red is really orange in the in the uh, prisma colors and then i need a bright orange not fluorescent or anything but lighter okay so i'm going to start with these colors i'll tell you what they are and i need to sharpen while i'm reading <laughs> All right. So I just want to sharpen them a little bit. And then we'll do the pumpkin or the squash, whichever you want to call it. Hi, Carla. Anybody else popping in? Hey, Marie. Did I say good morning to you earlier, Marie Lobby? Mad Rat Emma? Anybody else I missed? Okay. Sharp enough. All right. Oh, I'm going to need an olive green or two for the door. So here's a light olive stub. <laughs> and a darker olive. That might be too green. I need a 
Right, let's go with dark green because then I can, or I could go with a gray. Could go with a gray. Which one is this? Um, yeah. I just go by the colors and I don't know. I have to really pay attention to the names because I'm, you know, y'all ask. All right, so I'm going to go with uh, which gray is this? Green ochre. Is it green ochre? Yeah. So it's a it's a green gray, and then a and a, then a yellow. I mean, uh, light olive. But I think it's celadon or uh, no, it's not celadon. That's lighter. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so I need this door. And I will have my paper behind it here so we don't dent. I don't want to dent the next page. So you put something behind. And where's that other little piece? Well, I'll just pull this out here so it's color on. Okay, so I'm going to do this little door first. So I'm going to use the uh, green ochre and start doing a little bit of shading. Oh, I should probably zoom. Let's go back to the zoom. Hang on, guys. Let's go back to zoom it in here. So we can see when we're shading. Is that a little better? All right. If you have any questions, put them in caps. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it's a live show on Ustream with, I don't know. I was going to say mostly alive, awake people, but I haven't seen Jean talking in a while. <laughs> so I can say mostly alive and awake. <laughs> Jean might be napping. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, so we have uh, washes of watercolor. Whether it be watercolor from a watercolor palette or ink tense pencils or the uh, Zig water brushes, any and all of those. And so now we're going to use pencil to add depth to it. But I want to keep that wood grain look, so I'm being conscious of, you know, not just like coloring over the whole thing. I want it to be. On a wood grain. If you have any questions, put them in caps. And otherwise, I just hope you're watching and working on something. That's usually what I do when I'm watching long shows. I want I, um, I I color a lot. I mean, you know, I'm working while I'm watching. Oh, you said hi. Sorry, Jean. My my chat locked for a second. My bad. My bad, Jean. <laughs> Jean streams at four, musical scrapper, and she does a little everything. I'm I I really hope she keeps working on paintings. I'm just saying that's just me. She's really come so far in her artistic endeavors, and to see her painting and doing sceneries and ugh, I just like that. I think she needs to do more of that. That's just me. And uh, Janet, Monkey Island Madness, streams at 1. And I'm, these are Eastern times, by the way. I stream at 9 a.m. Eastern on Monday, Wednesday, and the occasional Friday. And on Mondays, we have Monkey Island Man Madness Janet at 1 and Jean at 4. And then who comes on on Monday nights? Somebody tell me. On uh, night shows, I always have to watch recordings, pretty much always. But, okay, so see there? Tilt it a little so you can see some of the true color. Because it does want to flash out, you know. But there you can kind of see. There we go. I'd like to get my light locking in there. Get the light locking in, let's see. Refocus, guys. One moment. Where's my 
Hang on, let's focus. Focus, come on, focus. Hang on guys, I'm trying to get it to focus. Not wanting to, because I'm so zoomed in. It's not wanting to let me focus. There we go. That's pretty good. Made it in time for the... You made it. Hey, Marilyn. Yeah. Made it in time for the doors. At least one. Okay, so now we're going to come back over here. All right, with my greens. And I'll do the little stem. Which is nubby. And then I'll take my light olive and kind of just blend it. You know, and I'm leaving some of the watercolor showing. So it gives it that more depth. Know what I mean, Vern? <clears throat> Let's see, here's my... All right, let's do the little floor. These are all the same colors. After this, I gotta get me some coffee. And take a break. Okay. Then again with the olive and just kind of blend just a little. So you can see that by putting a wash down, it just goes faster. You just get it done faster. Not that you have to rush. And if you don't want to go fast, there's no, you know. All right, so what I want to do though on the back side of this is, as you can see, it just was a piece of white paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of do some wood grain. Because it's not going to show until you open the door. But I'm just going to put a couple, a bit of kind of wood grain look like that. So that when you open the door, it's just not a piece of white paper there. And I could use my pen too. Somebody was asking me about using what kind of pen. We could put some whoops pen marks in here if we want. Kind of make it look like the front. Let's see. They got some little knots in them. So let's take my pen. I don't want my brush pen. Where's my red go? Here we go. And we'll do some. We'll make our own wood grain. You don't, you know, you wouldn't have to do any of this. You could just color it a solid color if you wanted. I just didn't want it white. So that when you open, let me put a few little knots and circles. So put little knot holes in it. I can't really hold it up because I'm so zoomed in, guys. Let me find something here to put it on. So if you just want to just make some little knot holes like this, and then what you do is kind of carry them out like that. So they kind of go around the wood grain, kind of goes around the knot holes. Does that make sense? So like here's a knot hole, and then what you do is just kind of go around, around it like that. And it gives you a little faux, it's, it's faux naughty. <laughs> Just so, and I got, I uh, picked up pencil with my pen here. Probably should have done this before I did the wax pencil, you know, Prismacolor. Because now I'm going to pick up the wax with the pen. So it's a fine point pen. 
it doesn't matter about the watercolor, but if you put Prismacolor down the, or any waxy pencil and try to go over it with something so tiny, you're picking up the wax from the pencil into the pen. So you got to have a light touch and then just kind of clean the tip off every now and then. There we go. So that, that'll be on the inside, you know. Maybe make this one a little darker on the... Faux naughtiness. That's right. Faux naughty. Don't be faux naughty. <laughs> <laughs> and you can take your dark and then kind of shade, you know, you can kind of shade around the wood to give it more depth, like right around the knotty parts. <laughs> like that. All right. And then same thing for the front here where there's some wood knots already there. You know, you can just kind of go around them just to make them kind of stand out a little. Now I haven't colored the wreath on the door, but I want to, I'll do that later because I want to get, I want to cut this out and put it on. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back over here real quick. Put the piece of, you know, have a piece of black cardstock under here and let's do a little bit more on the, uh, let's do a little bit more on the squash. So I'm going to take the darkest color I picked out here, which is orange, uh, pumpkin orange, and I'm going to start shading, okay? I'm going to start shading. And you could, again, you could do this layer, another layer, with your watercolor. Just add a darker bit of watercolor here. Now that it's dry. But every layer, every layer you put on in watercolor or wa any kind of water solid, but make sure it's dry between the layers because that's what's going to break down your paper if you let it get oversaturated. So you got to let it dry in between. <laughs> I need to sharpen this because I'm getting in some tight little bits here. <laughs> you girls. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to get back in here with the shading. And I'm moving like camera cord there making a jiggle can y'all see I know I'm not zoomed in that much so I'm just going like under each little petal here where it would be shadowed and there's little dots there's a little pointillism there so you can kind of see where they the artist put the shadow for you with pointillism ie dots <laughs> So hopefully y'all can see a little bit. And we'll try to pick this back up sometime this week. I'm I'm itching to do some collage, but you know, I really need I got some uh, I got some commissions to do this week, so I'm gonna have to make sure I don't play too much. Okay. So, can you see that? Oh, yeah, you can see that. All right, so I'm just going to keep going on the next. And this right here, I missed one of the little orange leaves. There we go. But if we have a few minutes for another little segment, is there some kind of, if y'all want to see any kind of up a specific type of art book or any kind of something what would y'all like to like to spend you know a little bit of time if we didn't do a project if you just want to see something or okay let me see which way that leaf is flipping it's going that away so that one's behind there if y'all wanted to see something or talk about something or show and tell something what would you like it to be because I don't know that I'm going to have too much more time to do a whole nother project after this, you know, so y'all let me know if you just want to spend a little bit of time talking about any specific color books or um, anything like that, just to have a little bit of time before Janet comes on. Let me know because I'm going to, after this, I'm going to take a break, go get some coffee, and start a new segment. Anything <laughs> your owls and anamorphia was the reason you started coloring. Oh, Zoe. 
Oh, I love my owls in there. Yeah. I like my lizards too because the lizards are really bright, colorful. Okay, so you can see it's not a lot of not a lot of products going on here. It was, you know, a wash of color, watercolor. And now, you know, this is just the first color that I'm adding to it. Just shading gives you um, the depth like that. Lettering books. Yeah, I, got, I can show some lettering books. Although, probably Janet's probably got more lettering books going on. I know she did show some. I don't know. She, she probably didn't show her whole collection. No, and Janet, that's not everything she has. Okay, so I'm going to go with the lightest of the oranges. Now, it's not the, it's not the yellow ochre, because I'm saving that for down in here. Okay, but this one is just orange, I think. Yeah, this is just orange. And all I'm going to do is just kind of lightly feather in the dark into the light. It's very subtle. I don't even know if you can tell. How, all right, let's look at this one. Oh, I see it flashed out of color. All right, see how that dark we had there? Now, if I just take this orange and just kind of feather it out, it just blends it into the light one. Real, It's very subtle, but see, it makes it that line go away. See those lines? It kind of makes that go away by just feathering it in. Or the book with the botana. Oh, yeah, I love that book. Yeah, it's an it's an art book. That's an inspiring book. You know, here's what, I'll, and I'll show it because I love it. Just like the James Christensen or some of the other art books I have. A lot of people go, oh, well, that just makes me, not many, but some. That makes me discouraged. I'll never be that good. <laughs> Stuff like that. To me, it is, it's like whether I ever achieve that level of beauty in something, I, I, you can as, aspire to it. And that's kind of how I feel with the botanical book that Carrie's talking about. I don't ever expect to do botanical illustrations as well as the book I'm going to show you. But it doesn't discourage me at all. It encourages me to say, look what's possible. And that's what I think about like some of the artists that I follow online some of the awesome artists that I follow, it's, they don't discourage me when I see how wonderful they are. It, it it's, tells me, look what's possible. Look at what is possible. And that to me is just like, you know, that's everything. Okay, so I do need, now that I've gone and kind of shaded out a little bit of the orange, I can see I do need to go in there with a, uh, like a... Uh, terracotta brown you know it's like a red brown or orange brown you know and get in there with just a little bit more shadow so like like right up here on the stem and just pull in just a little bit extra terracotta a little bit dark it's probably you may not even be able to see it on camera but it just makes a little bit more depth like right in the little crevices of the petal like the little V point there, that's where it would probably be the very darkest. Let's see here. Oh, sorry guys, I'm so zoomed in. I'm not able to hold it up and get any closer. I can zoom in more, but I can't hold it up. So I'm just getting right in those little tight little, in between the petals. that. All right, now let's do the next row. So when you see some artist that you think, oh my gosh, I love that person's work. I'd never be able to do that. Well, even if you think that, you just never know how far you can go. But if you say, I'll never do that, you'll, you probably never will. You can say, oh my gosh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm not near there yet. But don't ever say never because who knows how much time it will take you if you practice and put your heart into it, whether you could get to that level or not. Can you show some of the 
larger books you have under my desk. Oh, you mean my portfolios of artwork? That's what well, that used to be under the desk when I had it over there. But I think that's what you're talking about. Because now under my desk are bins of paper. But if you mean some of my larger artworks, I can show you like my animal posters. Those are nice and big. A lot of our sketchbooks and just things in, in who knows, you know. Some are finished, some are not. I don't have them organized. Well, I do have some organized by finished and not finished. But it, I don't really have organized portfolios because I don't need to show my work. You know, if I want to show anything, I just photograph it and it's emailed. I don't have to, you know, tote around physical artwork. Um, so the problem with, yeah, I might be able to pull out some, but um, it, that'll take me a little bit of time, you know, to go through and pick out things to show you but I can do that at some time I just don't know that I have time to do that today you know go through and pick out things um grayscale really now there's to me there's two kinds of grayscale there's the the true grayscale where it's like a photograph where somebody's taken a photograph and turned it into like um, a color book page. I'm sure you've seen what I'm talking about. I, I have a couple around here somewhere. But they've taken a photograph and they've run it through filters and turned it into a color book. I'm trying to think of which ones. I can't think of the names of them right now. And then there's the kind like um, the photo, the grayscale that's like um, uh, Bennett Klein where his art he's shaded let's see let me get one here that has grayscale elements i mean they're called grayscale sketches but it, it it's not like taking a photograph and turning it into a grayscale do you know what can y'all i need to find one to show y'all an example let me put my little thing here to hold that down um hang on one second let me flip a minute I'm trying to find one because I've only got a couple. Um, ah, here we go. Okay. So here's the difference to me. Sounds for Yeah. All right, and I might be too zoomed in to do this. Okay, so like here's Bennett Klein's. He's got his drawing and his shading. In, in shades of gray, right? But he didn't take, I mean, he took his artwork and photographed it. See, I'm not being very specific here. But then here is a Degas, Degas, Edgar Degas. Uh, and here is where they have taken a photograph of a painting and turned it into a color book. This to me is real gray scale. It's like if you took a picture a photo, just say if it's a photograph of you, a person, and you put it through your grayscale filter and turn it into a black and white image, this to me is grayscale. This is, in a sense, grayscale because it's got grays, but this to me is true grayscale. Am I making sense? I don't know. See? where you take a photograph of something and turn it into black and white. It's like a photograph turned into black and white, where this is a drawing turned into black and white. To me, it's a difference. It may not be to many, most people. It may all be grayscale, <laughs> you know, to everybody. I'm not getting any feedback, so I don't know. Maybe nobody's really paying attention to the grayscale element thingy. Okay, so we'll move on. <laughs> All right, let's go back to coloring. Okay, so now let's go into some of these little, um, the little, I call them uh, squash or pumpkin warts. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm going to take my, because now we're going to go into yellow ochre, and then I want a little bit of, um, I don't want the same shading there. I want a different color of, of uh, hmm. I want it just a little darker than this, but I don't want it completely orange. I'd rather have it almost onto the brown side, because I want it to like different colors. I want it to look like the fall colors. And like this is oranger, and then this will be yellower. You have some grayscale photos waiting to be colored. Yeah, and um, Miss, like Miss Vicky B, she sent us a couple of them. We haven't colored them yet. Sorry, Miss Vicky, but she sent us a couple that were like art, like photographs. It's an actual photograph of something. I don't remember. There was a scene in a person or something. And. And they've been turned into black and white grayscale, okay? But then I don't look at, I mean, even though it's called grayscale, grayscale, okay? It's like <coughs> shading. <coughs> it's like it's pencil shading, right? But it is gray. It's got grays in it. But I just, I personally differentiate between a photograph turned into grayscale and a drawing that is grayscale. But here's my thing that I was trying to get at. Either way, either way, the shading is almost done for you. So when you go on top of it, even if you don't do any shading, you're going to get automatic shading, you know? Okay, so I guess I will go with... No, I don't want Sienna. I want another shade of brown. Let's see here. Let's see. Burnt ochre. That's what I need. Yellow ochre and burnt ochre. Um, just in case, grayscale images... Eileen's posting a paragraph. She's, pro she's posting a book. <laughs> grayscale images are often the result of measuring the intensity of light at each pixel in a single band of electromagnetic spectrum, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, etc. And in such cases, they are monochromatic proper when only a given frequency is captured, but also they can be synthesized from a full color image. See the section about converting to grayscale. Now, there you go. <laughs> I don't need to say any more. <laughs> Thanks, Eileen. <laughs> okay, so now what I want to do is kind of go in and around some of these little, the little uh, warts. So I'm just going to kind of shadow under them, and that'll make them look like they are popped out. Even if you do the smallest ones, that's going to give the whole uh, squash pumpkin more depth. <laughs> and also under the leaves here. <laughs> Oh, so I'm just kind of doing a little C shadow, like I'm imagining the light coming down from here. So there's going to be a shadow under every single little nubby. <laughs> but I can also keep a lot of the watercolor wash, so that doesn't have to be like, you know, redone. So yeah, you can see it a little bit there, right? And again, under the little top here, will be darker shaded areas in there. <laughs> that ends our last. Yeah, Demonte, that ends our art lesson for today. <laughs> Eileen, the educational enabling elf. Oh, that's good, Muse. We got to write that. It's got to go in the wing nut book. <laughs> Eileen, who we already call the enabler elf, is now the Educate, educator enabling elf. <laughs> and that was by Muse. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's too funny. See how, why I like Mondays? How can you not like Mondays when we're all here having fun? That's just me. How can you not like it? Hey, Vicki BR. 
not to be confused with Miss Vicky, Miss Vicky B, who was here earlier. I don't know if she still is. But thanks to all our Vickies, and we have Vicky S, all our Vickies stopping in. Anyway, it's how can you not have a good Monday when you start it off with a room full of creative, happy, cheerful, for the most part. I mean, you know, we have our moments. We all have our moments. But we try to have, a, you know, we have education from Eileen. We have education from Eileen. All right, so I'm just getting, I'm, I'm going to where all the little pointillisms, all the little dots, that's what pointillism is, dots. Uh, I'm going for where all that is. I wanted to finish this up. Oh, I've already gone over two hours. I was trying to keep it right at two hours. Let me just add a little bit more here. And then we'll continue this. I, I'm not going to color this page without you guys. I'll just save it. If I want to color in this book, I'll go to another page. But I'll keep this page for filming purposes. For filming purposes. See how much, look, see how much depth that gives us warts? Who would have thought? We're giving warts depth. <laughs> All right, let me do all these top ones here. All right. Now I'm just going to take my yellow ochre. And you can just kind of blend out the harsh edges, like right along here where it's really a light, almost like a line. And you can just soften it so that they kind of blend together. Can you see how that, those little, just the shadow under each wart? <laughs> okay. Night, Melody. Thank you. So, yeah, if you just kind of shadow under each one, it really makes them, you know, pop out. <laughs> oh. Yes, <laughs> there's, there's, there, um, you know, the little bumps that are on squash, you know, don't you, don't you ever get those like in the fall, you know, you decorate with them, I guess, you know, so, certain ones you can eat, we always, you know, we buy them to decorate, make, you know, place, you know, so when did I make, need to put shadow around them with an eyebrow? So when I do my makeup, you need to put shadow. If you want to make the, you, that stand out, that's why you eyeliner and stuff. You know, in your makeup, you eyeliner. That makes your eyes stand out. People use lip liner. I don't, but you know, you use lip liner. Make your lips stand out. Contour your cheeks, you know. And then these down here, I, I can just add a little bit of shadow on the bottom of them. Because there's no background to them. They're all just kind of jumbled up together. So I'm just going to shade each one just a little bit. And then here's some background I can kind of fill in. Okay. So you can see when we do a real-time coloring or real-time anything, how long it takes to actually do, you know, especially like a double page spread like this. But it's relaxing. To me, color booking is not just for like, you know, relaxing and stuff, although it is that too. But you're practicing, you're shading, you're blending, you're different mediums, you're practicing how your watercolor, your water brushes, your ink tint, your water brushes, your neo color, you're practicing with all your supplies, whatever supply it is that you happen to favor. So you're practicing. You're not just, don't look at it as just like, oh, I'm just doing a color book page. Look at it like you're really, you know, practicing your techniques because you are practicing your techniques. 
Okay, so there we go. We're going to stop for now. We're going to stop on it for now. So you can see, I think. Okay, guys, so I'm going to stop this segment and hope hopefully you uh liked watching it where's my door oh wait we gotta cut we gotta cut the door hang on let me get um an exact and i need a cutter let me get a cutting mat to put under it and I'll go ahead and do both doors here. So there's little dotted lines. So I'm just going to cut along the dotted line. Let's do the other side too. Yeah, make sure. <laughs> Please make sure if you cut in your color book, you have a cutting mat underneath. <laughs> You'll cut through four pages or more. All right. So I'm just going to cut down this side. And let's put our doors on. Even though this one's not colored yet or anything, but we're going to go for it. All right, so we're going to poke that through. And then we'll take a scotch tape. And on the back side here, tape it down. Do the other one. Kind of while I'm holding it, I'm just kind of making sure I get it in the right spot. Kind of bend it. So there we go. We got this one. And again, I haven't painted, you know, done anything with the back of this one yet. So we got that one. I know, isn't it so cute? Well, of course, we have to do the hinge and everything still. but And the, you know, wreath and the inside. But there we go. So I need to, I need to color that a little bit more into the tab. Didn't get it quite up far enough. I didn't think that was going to show. So, there we go. But I want it right over, you know, I want to cover it up exactly. So, isn't that cute? I love it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. Isn't it gonna look so cute when it's done? So yeah. And if it's if this gets in my way when I'm coloring, I can just I'll just pull the little piece of scotch tape off and take the door off, you know. So yeah. Especially when I do this one. I'll probably take it back off. But I wanted y'all to see what it looked like. Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. So that's all we're going to do right now on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. So again, we are coloring in. I'm not sure how you say it. Don't make me. Oh, let's see. Because it's Czech. I don't know how to how the Czech accent goes, you know. But it's by Clara Markova. And if you look, look that up, uh, if you look up Clara Markova, you'll find it. So, yeah. All right, guys, so hang on, and I'll be right back if you're watching on YouTube. Thanks for watching.